no one had more insight into the functioning of our human existential realities than the ancient yogis and yoginis of the past. In fact, what is a yogi? What is a yogini? How would we define this term, yogi? And in my view, the term defines itself very simply. A yogi, a yogini is a person who has taken by virtue of a great quest that has become a life in them, a great existential quest to find out who they truly are. A yogi and a yogini is someone who has found out, who has taken great tangible insight into the functioning of our minds, into the functioning of the multidimensional modalities within us and they have found out what is the actual relationship between who we are and the rest of the universe. They have found out the laws upon which we function. They have discovered the laws upon which the functioning of this universe that we are surrounded by is based. So, if we study the words and if we read the words of these ancient yogis, and I might add even Nowadays, we have this very interesting arising of, of what I would call the contemporary yogis and yoginis, persons that in my view have tremendous insight also into our existential functioning. You just have to sort of find them and you have to not be deceived by outer appearances. Sometimes they just don't come these yoginis and yoginis and yogi yogis and yoginis, they don't come uh, in these outer garb, you know, these outer presentations that we would expect. They don't always come in a very exotic Asian way. Sometimes they come quite Western and quite ordinarily dressed and they appear very, very ordinary. So you, you have to be careful. In my, in my perception, you have to be careful. Uh, it takes a moment or two to really find out who is a yogi and a yogini these days. Um, so they have found these wonderful insights of how we function. Uh, they have found these insights because of many many years of meditation practices and uh, looking inward. And as we look inward, which is something most people don't really do, as we look inward, we begin to discover treasures that are hidden in our hearts, treasures that are literally uh, hidden uh, in the deeper dimensions of our physical uh, reality. So, the yogis have said that it is because we are so incredibly fragmented um, that we don't really know who we are. We are all over the place in our mind, in our thoughts. We have a gazillion thoughts a minute. We have emotions, we have feelings. And between all these thoughts and emotions and feelings, we represent a, a splintered kind of existence. We are incredibly fragmented. So they say the first thing to do is to develop one-pointedness, one-pointed focus, one-pointed intention, which they called ekagrata, one-pointed concentration. Uh, rather than being all over the map, rather than having a splintered kind of existence, begin to train yourself to have a one-pointed attention. Focus on something and rest your attention on that specific area. They, they have come up with many different kind of focal points, uh, the breathing, the belly, um, certain points in the body, um, even looking at a beautiful flower is quite sufficient. Look at a beautiful flower. In fact, they were very fond of working with things that you find beautiful, that you love, um, which makes a lot of sense because if you focus on something that is beautiful, that you love, it's much easier to rest your attention on that than it is to focus on some other abstract or uh, physical um, aspect of yourself. So they say focus on one thing only, 
rest your attention there and as you do that gradually your your fragmentation begins to disappear and as your fragmented uh, existential modality begins to disappear you well you calm down many things happen you calm down you gradually become clear and you gradually begin to see beyond um, the chatter of the continuous chatter of your mind and that continuous chatter of the mind that really is the one big problem that we have it's that chatter of the mind that prevents us from seeing who we really are so one-pointed attention just focus on uh, the point where your belly moves up and down your breathing a simple thing just that and do that for example for 15 20 30 minutes okay or they like to focus on chakras which are centers which are points within the body which if you focus on them these points which are the seeds of consciousness these seeds of consciousness begin to expand and clarity arises again for example focus on the third eye focus on that point you will find that to be very difficult actually because we're not used to doing that so you will focus on your breathing or the point between your eyes and you'll be there for five seconds and then forget again so the, the process that we have really that is important is not just one of focusing we have we focus we forget we focus we forget so you have to bring yourself back innumerable times to the point of your focus and that is simply part of this process that is happening because we forget remember forget so you bring yourself back over and over and over again and the more you do that you, the more gradually you will begin to have success to establish one-pointed focus and when this begins to happen when you actually begin to successfully be able to uh, focus on something some point uh, over a longer period of time uh, great revelations will begin to take place within your existence within your being you will become capable to take genuine tangible insight into who you truly are who your what is your existence what your existence truly is you will begin to have revelations within your own being and once you begin to have these revelations um, you have reached the beginning of wisdom and you have reached the beginning uh, of your own genuine existential liberation Thank you. This is Andreas Mamey from Paris. Have a wonderful day.